thanks to Metal Canyon for letting me use his gameplay of Fallout 2. You can check out his channel through the link in the video description. At the end of my video about the Lone Wanderer vs the Courier vs the Soul Survivor, I said that the Chosen One from Fallout 2 would mop the floor with all of them. In this video, I'm going to explain why the Chosen One is a god among men. To understand the strength of the Chosen One, we must first look at where he came from. The Chosen One was born in the mid-2220s to a set of parents whose name nobody knows. His grandparents, specifically his grandfather, is one of the most revered men on the West Coast. A New California Republic legend, the Chosen One's grandfather is none other than the Vault Dweller himself. After his exile from Vault 13, the Vault Dweller established Arroyo in 2167. After taking a wife and teaching his fellow tribe members what he could, he left to explore the wasteland. In 2209, he helped a Brotherhood of Steel initiate defeat Addis' army in the Secret Vault. What happened after that is a mystery. My point is, it is in the Chosen One's very DNA to be a leader. He was always destined for greatness. From the time he could talk, he was trained to be Arroyo's next elder, to take the reins from his mother, the long reigning elder of Arroyo and the daughter of the Vault Dweller. Not only would he be their leader, he would be their champion as well. The Chosen One was groomed to be the pinnacle of what Arroyo had to offer. However, as the Chosen One thrived in his position, Arroyo did not. Their community was falling apart. The only man who could save them was the Chosen One, and, much like his grandfather, he left behind everything he knew to save his people, because there was nobody else who could. I'm not gonna give a mission by mission review of everything the Chosen One did in Fallout 2. His feats are many, so we'll just be focusing on the big ones, and they don't get much bigger than Frank Horrigan. Who is Frank Horrigan? He is quite possibly the strongest and toughest human-esque being to ever exist in the Fallout timeline. Super mutants by themselves are already tough as nails, and a specialized suit of power armor for anyone with combat training makes them an angel of death on the battlefield. Now imagine a 12 foot tall super mutant genetically altered by the Enclave that was grafted into a custom made suit of power armor and equipped with cybernetic upgrades like bionic eyes to improve his vision and mechanized arms to give him even more strength. Frank Horrigan is more like a walking nuclear warhead than a mortal man. He once ripped a death claw in half with his bare hands. He ripped a death claw in half with his bare hands! Horrigan is also one of only three Fallout antagonists to have a 10 in every special stat. Just listen to him talk and try to tell me you wouldn't be shitting your pants if you heard this. You've gotten a lot farther than you should have, but then you haven't met Frank Horrigan either. Your ride's over, Muty. Time to die. Who can possibly stop a creature like Frank Horrigan? The Chosen One, that's who. Frank Horrigan is... To quote Braun from Game of Thrones, freakish big and freakish strong, and quicker than you'd expect for a man of that size. But still, the Chosen One is able to take him down. It is not at all an easy fight. It's one of the toughest combat sequences in any Fallout game, regardless of what difficulty you're on. Defeating Frank Horrigan in and of itself is a hell of a feat, enough so that he'd be talked about as a man of legend years after he dies. But there's more. When the Chosen One boarded the Enclave oil rig, killing Frank Horrigan wasn't even his primary goal. It was to stop the Enclave. I'm not gonna go too in-depth here, because this video is about the Chosen One, not necessarily Fallout 2 as a whole. Think of it this way. There's the Brotherhood of Steel, right? The main chapter in the Capital Wasteland is headquartered in the Citadel. And then there's the West Coast chapter in the Mojave Wasteland. The Mojave chapter are not pushovers, but they're not nearly the dominant force the East Coast chapter is. That's the Enclave. Compared to the Enclave in Fallout 2, what you see in Fallout 3 is nothing. Now understand that just as the Chosen One took down Frank Corrigan, so did he to the Enclave. To be fair, he had others, like Marcus, the same Marcus from Jacobstown in New Vegas, helping him, but still, he led the charge and fought through the Enclave's offshore base and eventually blew the damn thing up. He took down the Enclave when they were at their most powerful. Fighting, hand-to-hand -hand combat, precision shooting, those are all great things, but there's more to a man than how hard he can punch something. 
If you have such a way with words that you can convince anyone to do anything, you can get a lot of things done. Alright, the Chosen One wasn't quite that good, but he was damn close. He played a big role in the New California Republic growing and expanding as quickly as they did. Rather than just using fear as a motivator like many other small tribes did, he convinced the nearby tribes that it would be in their best interest to join up with this new California Republic thing. That's enough, the stories are over, now we're gonna get a bit more technical. The Chosen One has access to the Enclave's Advanced Power Armor Mark II, which is among the most powerful armor ever created. Its damage resistance is 60, it grants plus 4 to strength, and plus 75 to radiation resistance. For comparison, the Enclave Hellfire Armor in Fallout 3, which is among the best armors in the game, has 50 damage resistance, plus 1 to strength, and plus 15 radiation resistance. The advanced power armor blows the Hellfire armor out of the water in every way possible. Regarding weapons, the Chosen One can use the YK-42B Pulse Rifle, the most powerful rifle in Fallout 2. The Pulse Rifle does up to 78 damage per shot. With Luck at 10 and the Sniper Perk, the Chosen One can land critical shots almost every time he attacks, which means going up against him might as well be a death sentence. There's one last thing to mention though, and it's certainly useful in a fight, but sometimes intimidation is the name of the game. Put the fear of God into someone, and things get a lot easier. What am I talking about? I'm talking about Goris, of course. Goris is a rare albino deathclaw, found in Vault 13. Not only is Goris an albino deathclaw, he's an intelligent albino deathclaw, and can be a companion in Fallout 2. If you come across someone who's got a deathclaw watching his back, you know you're in for a very bad time. By now, I think it should be fairly obvious that there isn't a man or woman alive who could defeat the Chosen One. Not the Vault Dweller, not the Initiate, not the Warrior, not the Lone Wanderer, not the Courier, not the Soul Survivor. Nobody. Frank Corrigan was among the most powerful instruments of destruction ever created, and even he couldn't be the Chosen One. And that's gonna do it for this video about the Chosen One from Fallout 2. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything. Follow me on Twitter at Mitten Squad. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.